Now let's talk about the seven different types of numbers or sets of numbers represented by these letters N, W, I, Q, Q with the bar on top, I, M, and C. The natural numbers are the basic counting numbers. So 1, 2, 3, and so on to infinity. The whole numbers simply includes 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, to infinity. And in Canada, we like to joke around and say that the number 0 was invented to explain the Toronto Maple Leafs. Since they haven't won the Stanley Cup since 1967, that's our one of our hockey teams. You can apply it to one of your least favorite sport teams in your country. In fact, going way back, zero wasn't even a concept in some societies. So when it was included, it was a major breakthrough. The integers, represented by the letter I, include zero and the positive and negative whole numbers. infinity. The real number, I mean the rational numbers represented by the letter Q because R is going to be used for something else, is all the numbers that can be written as fraction such that A and B belong to the integers and of course B cannot be zero if you can divide by zero, you can prove one equals two and all sorts of other things, as I did in one of my most famous videos. And then there's the irrational numbers, which are represented by the Q with the bar on top, the bar meaning not. Those, that's the set of numbers that are not rational. And so if we look into this a little bit further, the rational numbers consist of either repeating or terminating decimals. So the irrational numbers consist of the set of non-repeating and non-terminating decimals. So for example, you have two-fifths, that's 0.4, that's a terminating decimal, whereas if you have two-thirds, that's 0.666 repeated, indicated with the bar on top of the 6. That's a repeating decimal. The non-repeating, non-terminating decimals, for example, are numbers like pi, 3.14, etc., etc. Euler's number E. I've recited both of those in previous videos to hundreds of decimal points. The square root of numbers that are not perfect squares, like two, for example, and so on and so forth. And there's the imaginary numbers. But just before I talk about those, let me point out that altogether, the rationals and the irrationals are called the real numbers. So the imaginary numbers are the set of real numbers multiplied by the root of negative 1, because the root of negative 1 is an imaginary number. Now, this might not be the best notation, but that's what I mean by that. Or you could maybe write it as little r representing a real number times the root of negative 1, which is represented by lowercase i. And then the complex numbers a set of numbers that include numbers like this. Again, a real number 
plus different real number times pi. So a real number plus an imaginary number. Now one more thing about this. The first four no types of numbers are considered to be countably infinite. All of these sets are infinite, whereas the last three are considered to be uncountably infinite. So what does that mean? Well, believe it or not, something can be more infinite than something else. There's different types of infinities, basically countable ones and uncountable ones. If you can make a one-to-one -one correspondence between the numbers and the natural numbers, or the whole numbers, or even the integers, then they're said to be countable. If not, they're uncountable. So we won't go into all the details, but basically there's different types of infinity. Something can be more infinite than something else in layman's terms. If you want to study that a bit more, do some research. All right, there you have it. See you next time.